Well, hello and welcome to DIY Design by CCW, and thank you so much for clicking on my video. Well, today I'm back with a DIY for you that I hope that you like. Uh, first of all, I have a couple of glass cylinders. Uh, I'll also be working with this butterfly cutting tool, and uh, I have this beautiful acrylic disc. Um, I'm also going to be working with some other fabric trims and brooches. I'm bringing back uh, the rings today. If you follow my channel, you may have seen me use these before. And I have this beautiful paper, uh, washable paper as well. Now I'll be doing just a little bit of painting and I'll be working with this multi-surface paint in 14 karat gold and uh, I'm also going to be using these crystals and uh, some other uh, crystals and, and other uh, parts or pieces rather to this DIY. Now the first thing I'll do is go right off camera, clean my glass pieces with this alcohol to help my paint adhere and then I'll be back and we'll get started on the DIY. Alright so the first thing I'm going to do is paint uh, the bottoms of my glass containers. Now uh, I'm only going to do the bottoms but I'll be using this acrylic brush uh, made by Langen, Nickel and Langenfield and uh, I'm just going to paint a light coat on the bottom of each of and the sides uh, of each of these pieces. Now if you notice you can barely see the paint that's because this is a very translucent paint uh, you know usually the metallics are and it's going to take a couple of coats before I get the look that I want. Now, if you haven't painted glass before, I'll tell you that what happens sometimes, uh, people will, you will get streaks uh, in the paint because you're really trying to overload the paint. Um, just putting too much in that first coat and you really don't want to do that. So again, uh, to get the look that you want unless you're looking for this kind of translucent look it's going to take two to three coats of paint and you have to let the paint dry in between to get the look that you want all right now I've let the first coat dry for a little bit I typically don't show it when I do the second and the third coat but here I'm back putting the second coat on and I will let you know that I had to end up coming back and doing a third coat to get uh, this paint to look the way that I wanted it to look but again try to keep your brush strokes even go in the same direction as much as possible don't overload the paint. Let the paint dry in between uh, layers and that will keep you from getting streaks. All right, now here I'm showing you what I do with the paint um, in between uh, coats. I seal it up in the little baggie there and uh, that way I don't have to keep rinsing and, you know, grabbing a, a, a new paintbrush. All right, so now I've made a few of these trays but today I'm changing up my process a little bit. Now I did make a tray very similar to this and I'll make sure to link it uh, right here so that you can go watch that video. Well watch this video and then maybe come back and watch that video. But um, the, the uh, process I've noticed after doing this a few times, I've learned I have to change it a little bit. Now typically when I'm trimming out the acrylic disc, I usually will do this part last after I put the rings on, but I've learned through trial and error that it comes out a little bit better if I put the fabric trim on the edges of the acrylic disc and then come back and add the rings. So here I'm just using my E6000 Quick Hold and uh, I'm going to go ahead and work my way all the way around the disc and then I'll go ahead and start placing the rings. All 
All right, so before I go ahead and uh, attach the rings, I'm going to go ahead and remove the uh, protective film. Now, I really like that uh, this particular brand of acrylic disc because it comes with these little tabs that kind of make it a lot easier to remove the film. Now, uh, to glue the disc on, I am going to use a little bit of the regular E6000 and the E6000 quick hold. Now, just in case you're new, the reason I do that is the uh, E6000 quick hold is a little thinner, but it also has a faster setting time. Now, the E6000 regular, if you've ever worked with it, it's a little bit uh, thicker, and uh, even though it's a very strong hold, it takes a little bit longer to set. So there's times when I need both, you know, the strong hold and the fast hold or fast setting time. Uh, so I mix the two together. Now what I try to do, I, I'm mixing them, but not quite. What I'm doing is using the E6000 regular and then going in and kind of uh, placing the, the uh, or rather the E6000 quick hold first, then I go in and try to place the, the regular E6000 in the places where maybe I don't uh, have any glue. Um, but it all works out in the end. So there I'm just going to basically hold the ring down until I feel that it's secure. And uh, once I feel that it's setting uh, at least enough, you know, so that I know it's not going to come up or come loose <laughs> or come off, I want to say, uh, then I'll flip the disc over and repeat the same thing on the other side. So while the rings are setting, uh, I'm going to glue's drying. I'm going to go ahead and glue on my crystal knobs that will be the legs for uh, my tray. Now, if you've seen the, my videos before, you know that I love making these trays and I always do, or not always, but usually I will do legs for the tray. And uh, back when I first started doing these DIYs, I would literally take wooden blocks and I would craft uh, the legs out of those little Dollar Tree wooden blocks. And occasionally I will still do that. But since then, I've really started to love using, uh, these are just crystal uh, door pulls or drawer knobs. And I just think they're beautiful. I buy them when I find them on sale. Uh, you can find them in my Amazon shop. They also sell them uh, at Home Goods and, uh, you know, just a lot of different places. But anyway, so now that those are glued on, and by the way, I glued them on with the regular E6000 because I don't want them, you know, I want them to stay firmly attached. Now I'm going to go ahead and start adding my crystals. Now this tray is very similar to a tray that I made previously and I mentioned it earlier that I had linked the video and I'm also going to link that video to the end uh, uh, and down in the description box so that you can watch it in case you didn't see it. But um, again, since I did that video, um, I've kind of changed my techniques a little bit and found some ways to do this that, uh, you know, makes it a little bit easier and also makes the tray a lot more sturdy. So here you see I'm just placing these crystals and what I'm doing, I'm going to use four of these 
uh, these crystals and then I've got some other the teardrop crystals that I'll be using as well and here you see I'm just placing a little bit of the E6000 now I used to mix the glue for this particular application and I've learned that it's better and you get a better hold if you just use the regular E6000. There you see me just getting a little alcohol to clean up a little excess glue from around uh, the one crystal. And then the whole thing is you get the crystal in place, hold it for a little bit until the glue starts to set just a tiny bit, and then use the clamp to keep it in place. Now, once these crystals set, I'll come back and we'll move on to the next part of, a, of putting this tray together. All right, so while the uh, legs and the bottom of the tray is drying, I'm going to go ahead, or while they are drying rather, I'm going to go ahead and assemble the top rings that will make up the top of the tray. Now, if you've seen me do these videos uh, before, or seen me make these trays before, or if you saw the first crystal and gold uh, tray, then you know that typically the top ring is usually just a single ring. Now, I do love all the other trays that I've made and they've worked out great, but I thought about it and I think after using them that maybe uh, the trays would look a little better and even be a little more sturdy by doubling the top ring. So that's what I did. I used a little uh, of the quick uh, regular E6000 glue and there you see I've clamped the rings together so that they can dry and now I'm adding a little decorative touch. Here I'm just taking some two millimeter closed chain wrap and again I'm applying this with the E6000 regular as well because I just want to make sure that uh, this trim stays put and uh, I'm going to go all the way around the top of the ring and uh, just give it this extra little bit of uh, bling. So again, different from the first uh, tray and most of the trays that I've made, but um, I like how it turned out, but you'll have to let me know what you think when we get to the end of, or when we get to the final reveal. So now it's time to attach the ring or the top ring to the bottom. Now this is the tricky part of this DIY. Uh, it's very hard to, uh, or it can be hard rather, to balance um, and to get the, the ring just right and have it sitting where you want it on the crystals. So there you see I just kind of did a test run to 
or dry fitting rather, just to kind of see where I wanted the top ring to touch. And now I'm going in and I'm adding the glue. Here also, you want to be a little, be careful because you don't want to get glue all over the crystals. Uh, there you see, I did get a little bit and I've learned that if that happens, you can just take a little bit of alcohol and I use the 90% uh, alcohol, by the way, and uh, a Q-tip and then you can get that off right away. So now I got the um, ring on like I want it. It's balanced and there you see I'm just using these clips to hold it in place. So again, takes a little bit, but you can do it. All right, now, um, and you also notice that I added a few other little things there just to kind of keep the tray stable uh, so that, you know, uh, I can, so that the ring doesn't come off. All right, so now the, I, I've waited for a little bit, and even though the ring is still drying um, and it's, and it's strong enough now though it's set well enough now that I can move on to the next part so these crystals I'm going to add to give the tray a little more strength and I also think it'll give it a little more interest and beauty um, I did something different when I did the first crystal tray which again hopefully if you haven't seen that video you'll go and watch um, but these are easy because the rings are already in place. It's just really a matter of putting a little glue uh, on the bottom and a little bit on the top and uh, that's it. And I'll go ahead and attach these to the tray, then put the tray aside and let everything dry. And uh, then I'll be back when we get to the next part of the DIY. Right, so while the glue is setting on the tray, I'm going to go ahead and use this butterfly tool. Uh, now the brand name is Recollections and you can pick this up from Michaels. Um, now I'm using the tool to cut out butterfly shapes. Now the paper I'm using comes from Joanne Fabrics. I'll make sure uh, to leave the name of the paper down in the description box, but it's a beautiful washable paper. Um, just love it. I've used it in a lot of different DIYs. Now, after cutting out several shapes, what I'm doing here is just adding a little bit of bling to each butterfly by adding a little bit of rhinestone trim. And then you'll see how I'll use these butterflies on the mirror and also my little decorative containers so that this, you know, set pulls together. And uh, all right, I'll be back when we get to the next part of the DIY.
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and use the butterflies to accent my crystal tray. Now, I think this tray is pretty as it is. And in fact, I may make another tray like this. I don't know if I'll have it on camera or not, or if I'll do it on camera, but I think I want one without the butterflies. But this set was supposed to be a butterfly set. I might be giving this set away as a gift so I'm gonna go ahead and add these butterflies and we'll see how they turn out but here you see me just adding uh, my e6000 quick hold now because of the way I glued these on if I decide to not give this one away I might end up removing the butterflies at some point but we'll see so here I'm just gonna you know glue them down one at a time and I'm basically placing them right up against the rim and I'll go all the way around like this and uh, that's pretty much it and then I'll put the tray aside and move on to the next part of this DIY All right, so before I do anything else to my pieces, I'm just spraying uh, the, the painted part of the pieces. And uh, this is uh, a polyurethane sealant and uh, it's made by folk art. And you know, when you use it, it's gonna go on like a, look like a, it's gonna be kind of a milky white as you can see there. Um, but when it dries, uh, it will be clear. And what it does is seal the paint. Now, especially if you're going to use your pieces um, in water or, you know, if you're, you know, going to uh, place your, your pieces like these may be used in a restroom or something like that. Uh, I do usually seal the paint. I didn't always show that before, but uh, I think it makes sense to show you, you know, the entire process. Now, if you're using, now this is when you're using the metallic paint. There is a paint by Folk Art that's called a multi-surface paint that doesn't require the sealing, but for these metallic paints, I have found uh, that the Folk Art sealant and uh, I've linked it to the video. So, and I also, I, you can also buy this in my Amazon shop as well. So, you know, if you're gonna do this type of painting and you wanna make sure that your paint doesn't chip and that you can wash your pieces, and if you're using a metallic paint, that sealant uh, is a great sealant. All right, so now the sealant is dry and it dries pretty quick. Uh, the sealant's dry, so now I'm going to go ahead and add a little more embellishment. Now, initially, I was going to leave these pieces clear. That was the initial design I had in my head. Um, and then I decided to go ahead and add this bling wrap. Now, uh, let me know what you think. Should I have left them clear um, and then just accented, you know, the painted edge? Or do you like the fabric trim? The good news about this fabric trim is that, or this, this uh, bling wrap rather, is that I'm placing it on with a little bit of E6000 quick hold. So if I decided some, to change it, um, and you know, if I don't give this away and I keep it for myself, I can remove the, the, uh, the uh, bling wrap if I want to. But we'll see. I think I like how it turned out, but you guys let me know what you think. Now these are going to be used, uh, I'm thinking, as maybe like apothecary containers. Um, if I keep it, I would use it in my bathroom. I would use this set maybe on my dresser. 
Um, if I give it away, of course, you know, the person I'm going to give it to will use it, you know, wherever they see fit. But if I were to use this in my restroom, I thought about the fact that maybe I wouldn't want it to be clear, but I don't know. So anyway, now I'm going to add a little bit more embellishment. Uh, here you see I have a couple of these butterflies left. So I'm just going to add that little bit of extra gold. And then uh, I'm also going to add uh, a silver rhinestone uh, butterfly to each of these pieces. But anyway, once I do that, um, I'll be moving on to the lids. Well, actually, I've got to do the larger piece and then I'll move on to the lids.
All right, so I end up making lids for both of the containers. Um, the one lid, the smaller lid, is just going to be a plain lid with a knob. So I'm not going to show that one, but I wanted to show you the larger lid uh, so that you'll get the idea. So basically I'm using an acrylic disc and uh, this acrylic disc doesn't have the little tabs like the smaller uh, lid does and like the the lid or rather the uh, acrylic disc that I use for the tray so what you saw me doing was just kind of peeling the the uh, film back and uh, doing it just a little bit so that it will make it easier once I glue on the trim. Now here I'm just using a little of my E6000 quick hold and I'm dabbing it on to this two millimeter closed chain wrap. And by the way, this particular wrap comes from eFavor Mart. I am an eFavor Mart affiliate, so if you'd like to order it, you can certainly do that. Uh, and I'll have a link down in the description box. Um, but I found that eFavor Mart, um, I had been getting this from Joanne Fabrics, but actually you get 10 yards uh, for a really reasonable price from um, uh, from eFavor Mart. So I decided to buy it and you know what? I like it. I like the quality of it. I also got uh, some in gold that I'll be showing you in another DIY. So now that I've done that um, and I've got the uh, plastic or the outer film off of the lid, I'm going to go ahead and just glue on the knob. And then once I get the knob glued on, and again, this knob is exactly like the knobs uh, that, that uh, I use for the legs on the tray. Now I'm using this, um, this E6000 glue that is made for like crystal beads and things like that. Uh, it dries clear. I'm placing just a little dollop in the center of each of the little crystals and uh, pressing down and voila, the lid will be done. All right, hang on. I'll be back for the final reveal. All right, this is how everything turned out. That's a look at the decorative tray. And this is a look at the tray, of course, with uh, the set on top. Now let's take a closer look at everything. Um, you know what? I think I do like this set. It's different, certainly different, but I do like it. And uh, I hope my friend that likes butterflies will like it too. And uh, I may make one of these for myself. I, I think I do like it. Um, there's a look at the lid with the crystals on top. And um, another look there at the front with the butterflies. And uh, you know what? I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what you think down in the description box. I'd love to hear. And uh, there's another angle of the set. Now here, uh, I'm just showing you some pieces that I've done in earlier DIYs. These two were more recent DIYs, uh, but I'll link those videos in the description box. Basically all with that same gold and silver kind of theme. And uh, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm already working on the next DIY. I know that I haven't been able to do many of them lately, but I'm working hard to get back on track. So again, thank you for watching. If you haven't uh, seen or visited my other channels, I hope that you'll do that today. And you know what? Can't wait to see you in the next video. Have a good day or night. Bye-bye.